Hello, welcome back to Mr. Bob's Bills. In this episode, we get round to painting Bill's head and bullseye gets a lick of paint too. You might be pleased to know that there's no video in this, this episode, it's just slideshow. So it'll be a short episode and I hope you enjoy it. Just to recap, the two parts there have had a, a primer of black and an undercoat of white shot directly from above. Before we crack on, I thought it'd be useful to have a look at the size or scale of this figure. The maker describes the figure as being 75 millimetre. And this means that from head to foot or from the top of the eyes to foot, the figure is 75 millimetres tall. In terms of scale, this roughly works out at 1 24th. And therefore, our 75 millimetre figure is a real life six footer or 180 centimetres. The coin used for comparison there is a UK 1p piece, which, if you're not familiar with that coinage, is approximately half an inch or 12 and a half millimetres in diameter. Now, without further ado, let's get to the heart of the matter. First of all, the hair received a coat of medium grey acrylic to give definition to the flesh areas and to act as a base coat for the hair, which will be done in oils. Then the face was given two coats of a well thinned down Games Workshop Talon Flesh. This is an acrylic paint and I'm not sure what this is called in the, in the new Citadel range. Next up I paint the eyes and this is all done with acrylic. The first brush strokes are to paint the entire eyeball black. This might seem a bit drastic but the aim is to get good definition. This area of the figure always draws attention. And therefore, it's, it's, it's my view that this should be, should be a dramatic part of the figure. The next stage is to add some colour to the eyeball. And the colour you see there is the tarn and flesh mixed with white to get a very pale pink colour. The pale flesh tone is then painted over the black. A fine line of black is left around, around the eyeball to note the limits of the upper and lower eyelid, while the pale flesh tone denotes the limit of the eyeball itself. A similar two-stage approach is taken with the iris, taking care to ensure that the figure doesn't look cross-eyed in any way. The iris is painted in in black to start with. The placement of the iris is dictated by the way the figure is looking, and in this case I've taken care to ensure that uh, uh, some of the white of the eye is visible below the iris itself. After painting the black area, it's time to add some colour. I decided that as my desired flesh tone is going to be towards the brown side, that I would add blue to add interest to the face. The blue, which is Games Workshop Ultramarine Blue, has been painted over the black, which I've I painted in the previous step, again attempting to leave a ring of black around the outside. I decided to make no attempt at painting the pupil. My hand just isn't steady enough for that. I did, however, attempt to add a tiny dot of white in the upper right hand corner of each, each of, the, um, of the irises. This highlight, which is known as a catch light, draws attention to itself and adds visual interest to the final figure. At this stage, my intention was to add a tiny bit of, of red to the corner of each eye to act as tear ducts and a fine line of red at the bottom of each, each eyeball to denote the flesh you can see on top of the eyelid. But I forgot. Now on with the oils. Here you see my palette. All the flesh tones, or the main flesh tones, have been painted with just two paints. And that's Mars Brown, which is a reddy brown, and titanium white. I first saw this, this limited palette demonstrated by top figure painter Adrian Hopwood. I decided that I'd like to give it a go myself. A bust painted by Adrian Hopwood can be seen in the latest edition of Figure Painter magazine, an online magazine which costs a pound a copy and it comes highly recommended. I'll provide a link below the video. In addition to the two main colours, I've used a dot of uh, purple madder for the areas where the hair and the flesh meet 
and where the flesh meets the hat. This is a very strong paint and only a little is required. I've also mixed a bit of Indian red, which is a dark browny red, into the pale flesh paint on my palette to add a bit of, bit of rosiness to the cheeks and to the lower lip and also in the, in directly into the scar tissue, his cheek and upper brow. I don't have any shots of any interim stages, so we're going to move now to what is the nearly completed head with the, the, both the hair and the hat painted too. I have to say that I'm, I'm really pleased with the way the face has turned out using the limited palette. I think the main flesh tones look really good and reflect someone who's had a hard life in the rougher areas of London. I'm also pleased with the, the tiny bit of purple matter that was worked into the flesh tones around, say there, the, the sideburns. I think this helps, helps to add to the, the impression of a, of a life lived to the full. The hat was painted with a mixture of warm grey and ivory black, and a bit of brown worked in to denote uh, good old wear and tear. The hair was a mix of French ultramarine, which is a lovely blue mixed with ivory black, and lightened with white, which has had a touch of crimson added, which helps to neutralise the blue undertone. Oh, and I added a bit of, bit of colour to the outside tear ducts, but not the ones nearest the nose. I chickened out when it came to that. Well, I think that's it for the head. Before I sign off, I, I'll show you the first steps I've taken with, with good old Bullseye. And I'm painting him entirely in acrylics. I've used ivory white, which is a Vallejo colour for the main colourings, and a variety of, of greys and very light browns for the shading. Can't really see it in the pictures, but there's a, 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 a tiny tint of pink around the mouth, the ears and the nose, and just at the back of the head, which you quite often see on pure white dogs. His poor old nose looks a bit big there, but um, what you can't really pick up is that the nose is a sort of a, a shiny black and that's a, a light grey surrounding it. Um, I'll do a bit more work on that to make sure that uh, the photographs differentiate between those two shades. And that, my friends, I think is enough for now. I hope you've enjoyed this. I, I have to say that I've really liked painting that, that head. The features are, are beautifully carved and a joy to paint. Next step will be to add head to figure, weather up the figure, put it on a base, and that'll be it. Thank you for watching. Come back soon.